this is a funny little update regarding the crystal situation right and i think i've revised my opinion on the situation especially considering what i've heard lately um regarding this supposed um supposedly there's a a kind of hollywood industry hollywood comedy scene entertainment scene expose due to come out soon um i think i've gathered that information from joey diaz's podcast a few episodes ago where he basically mentioned that a few journalists are basically ringing around comedy clubs and asking questions about certain comics and what happened here on this tour what happened here during this performance so everyone's sort of on no everyone's basically on notice and that might have been the reason why a lot of Chris Elias friends when when the news broke that he was being accused of you know um trying to hook up with underage girls that supposedly those um Hollywood, those LA comedy scene friends that were quick to throw him under the bus, you know, the Whitney Cummings, the Brian Callen, Brenda Shaw, the whole litany of other people, maybe except for the exception of Theo Vaughan, maybe. But all the people that threw him under the bus, maybe because they're signed with WME or, or what's the other one? CAA. These incredibly powerful, you know, um, um, agents, right, in the Hollywood industry or the entertainment industry who for sure have connections and links with people all over the place, right? And for sure in law enforcement or within journalism or within some of these, you know, broadsheets, right? I'm sure they have people in there that are feeding them information. So if there was something, if there was, because usually it, 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 it's never, yeah, usually it always feels like whenever someone gets accused of some sort of sexual assault, there's always there's always like a big story that comes with it right from either a new york times the la times new york post there's always some sort of like um article that kind of supports it whether it's the journalist reaching out to the um to the victim and sort of saying hey i can amplify your voice or it's a concentrated effort for the victim to put out a story on instagram and then for it to kind of get some traction so that the the writer could then go and pitch it to their edit to their editor and then put it out there's a whole sort of run market marketing plan or kind of um yeah or release plan right in terms of making sure it gets as viral as it can and reaches the most people as it can so you can impact some sort of change so that's what i'm thinking about i'm like hmm maybe there's something more to their silence because it just doesn't make any sense in it especially because i've been watching a lot of videos from yin yang monkeys so definitely check him out in yin yang monkeys i think he's on youtube he's on youtube he puts up little um compilations of various la comics like you know um funny moments on various podcasts and it's just a shame to see you know all those great moments from chris being basically put into a vault you're not sure whether you're going to see him on the podcast again so it got me thinking then suddenly this article pops up on my timeline from the los angeles times unfortunately it says here the title is netflix scraps upcoming crystalia and brian callum prank show so this might have given us an indication why brian was so quick to disown um crystal on his podcast t5k um the Friday kid when he said oh i don't know the guy <laughs> we haven't talked together um i haven't seen anything and then he's here and then he went he went ahead and deleted every single picture of chris on his instagram page so i'm sure that was part of the reason if you're familiar with the fire and the kid you would know that brian kellen even though he's been very fortunate in his career to you know essentially have one of the biggest la based podcasts in the fire and the kid right brenda shaw was you know um obviously played a big part in it but he's been a part of a really popular podcast he's friends with joe rogan so he doesn't necessarily need to kowtow to the hollywood elites but he's in a position but admittedly for himself he's always wanted to be you know accepted by the hollywood industry as much as he tries to kind of tell himself otherwise so it should be no surprise that he was be the first to sort of like back under the pressure and not back his friends up especially you know coming off the back of appearing for a brief second in the joker movie it makes some sort of sense um of course you would prefer him to be more you know stand up for his friend but you know we can't be telling these people how to live their lives it's none of our business i think if you're in the same position as brian cannon was and your career was suddenly taking some kind of uptick right you had your own little you had your own um spin-off tv show with the goldbergs that he was doing then you're suddenly appearing in joker even if, even if it's briefly for a couple of seconds it's still a good look in terms of you in terms of industry stuff and you know good connections and exposure and relevancy all that sort of nonsense your podcast is taking up joe rogan um proximity sort of like shine you're getting a bit of rub from him that's a good thing so if anything it makes sense why he'd want to throw his friend under the bus considering you know anything that's going on in his career especially if you pay attention to the podcast you know you know brian kind of has had it hasn't had it easy in hollywood right it's loads of kind of failed attempts to try and be the next um 
what this what, is, what do they say uh what, what is it tom hanks is it the brendan Shaw takes a piss out of him that supposedly he was built to be the next tom hanks so he was he always had that kind of chip on his shoulder so for him to get panicked and think you know what I don't want, like, I've got a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chance of a career. I'm not going to fuck it up now. Not for anybody, even for my one of my closest friends in the industry. Um, and I guess maybe, again, it's hard pill to swallow if you're Chris, but I guess maybe if you're Chris, you would not be that annoyed because you know what it is, right? The game is the game. I think if Chris was in the same position and something like that happened to Brian, I'm sure he will maybe do the same thing. I think so. I don't know. Who knows? We can't psychoanalyze this too much. But it's interesting to watch from the outside. And again, like I mentioned, most so because these guys talk such a big game about being independent and doing what they want. But in the moment something happens like this, they do sort of like react the same way that, you know, your regular Chris Hemsworth would have reacted. They do exactly the same thing, right? The statements that are just, you know, a bit vanilla um the, the the distancing from the person the non com the non comments about it like it's just yeah but what can you do it's really the article for los angeles times it says the show was cancelled so they had a prank show together which would have been pretty cool considering their comedic um sort of uh connection they have right they, they've done loads of before brian callen deleted them all there's loads of great little videos of brian callen and, and chris delia together doing some funny skits on the streets a lot of really cool improv stuff so it would have been a pretty cool show but hey what can we do so the article says the following a month after chris delia was accused of sexual in impropriety by multiple women netflix have confirmed it has decided not to proceed with a prank show featuring the comic in june numerous women came forward on social media and then in the times claiming that the stand-up comedian had acted inappropriately towards them delia 40 denied that he had knowingly pursued in the underage females emphasizing that he'd only engaged in legal and consensual relationships when the allegations surfaced delia had only just closed a deal with netflix to make a show with one of his best friends a fellow comedian and Brian Kellen oh man that timing man that bloody timing which makes me think if some of these things are like concerted efforts because we we haven't really got any update from these girls and again maybe it could be because they're taking legal action but the allegations have sort of died down right they, that Instagram that they had up with all the allegations that's sort of gone gone away right or hasn't been updated in a while I don't know I haven't checked but um it doesn't feel as if like there's a lot of steam behind this anymore and i wonder why it's obviously it could be um the calm before the storm before this supposed article comes out or it could just be because there is nothing to it but the timing especially if you're innocent must be brutal if you're guilty then it doesn't matter what the timing is you know it is what it is you just you deserve that karma um but if, if you are innocent, that timing is brutal. Securing a deal with Netflix to produce a show, even if you're Crystal Lear, it's not easy, I'm assuming, right? To close shows and get them greenlit is not an easy process. To finally get it done, you're going to do it with your best friend, who I'm sure Netflix would have not wanted to use it because, you know, Netflix have turned Brian Callan a few times for his special. So I would imagine they're probably pushing for somebody else and you finally get your friend to do it or you finally get your Netflix on board to kind of greenlight your friend to do it and suddenly this pops up. It's like, Youch. So it continues. Continue. It says um, the non-scripted series was to focus on the relationship between the two comics and their affinity for pulling high jinks, according to sources familiar with the deal. But the show had yet to go into production, and when Delia came under fire, Netflix scrapped the show. A spokesman for the streaming network confirmed neither Delia, Delia's lawyer nor Khan's agent immediately responded to a request for comment. Delia still has a number of projects uh, available for Netflix, which is which I guess is kind of a good sign. But I don't know if it is because usually if it's a real if it's a real serious case, like something that is you know there's a lot of evidence online as it is, they'll just quickly delete it because they don't want any any kind of blowback. But I guess when it's when it's these sort of like he said she said claims and you know they all sound like really bad sort of um, inter sexual inter encounters as opposed to knowingly trying to groom underage girls in you know it's from what it seems like it seems like it, it, it was him being an absolute douchebag when it comes to dealing with girls right he's not necessarily a romeo right um he gets straight he gets straight to the business and kind of leaves no if buts or maybe so it does seem like most of them were really just terrible interactions right with somebody you idolize you think he's a really fun comedian um you get close to him and then you you expect you know that same person on instagram to be the same person me in the green room it just doesn't work out that way so maybe if you're on netflix you're like we could keep them up but does do netflix want that kind of issue i don't really know what it says to it but you know 
it's a shame really all things considered for all for all parties isn't it because it's really dragging out i'm sure if you're a victim and you actually want him to be punished as well it must be painful to you know it feels like it's just stuck in the mud um with lawyers i'm assuming probably slapping down what you call it what they what they what those things called when you can't talk about things um on people i'm sure it says it continues here it says um Da, da, da. His free comedy special is in addition to the second season of his U, in which he played the sexual predator. He is also set to appear in Army of the Dead, a Netflix movie directed by Zack Snyder that was filmed prior to allegations and is still slated to release in 2021. I wonder what they're going to do. Will they just like delete him from the, from the movie or they just leave him up there? Because for sure, once that movie comes back out, people will just be regurgitating the allegations again and it's just going to keep cycling through. It's like, the, it's like that Jeffree Star clip of, of him saying the N word in somewhere in LA. Whenever he does something bad, that clip comes back out again. <laughs> it's just like a sister. <laughs> Mate, getting cancelled is so dead, man. So dead. It continues. It says, last month, five women. Da, da, da. Yeah, we know that. But yeah, um, that's the news, man. That's the news, unfortunately. And maybe it's a cautionary tale, isn't it? Maybe this is a cautionary tale. If you're Brian Callan, you know, you spent, you, you, they were so quick to reply. Literally before the allegations had even dried, right? The ink dried in the allegations. They were quickly on their show crying and sobbing and weeping and going on as if the guy died or he committed, a, you know, a school shooting, God forbid. And, you know, they distanced themselves from him really quickly, but that didn't really help, did it? The show still got cancelled. And who knows what damage this has done to, you know, their respective relationships in that building regardless so i don't know is it worth doing those public distancing with your friends especially in hollywood when the industry is snaky anyway they don't give a shit about anyone unless you're just squeaky clean you don't get any love from anybody so if you make a mistake you're out um is it worth it really throwing your friend under the bus or is there something more to the story that we're not aware of are there some really serious allegations that have yet to kind of see the light of day that would really just put this whole thing to bed who knows who bloody knows but one thing i'm for sure is i'm just happy that i don't live in la i'm happy that i'm not trying to become some sort of you know <clears throat> action movie star or something because god forbid mate god forbid you are trying to do that and you get into some kind of hot and bo hot bother not don't, don't get me wrong i'm not talking about you know trying to sleep with underage girls that's that's a madness but just imagine you get into some argument with a girl in a shopping center or something right and you call her the c word in frustration you know she's giving you lip back she pushing you into the queue she's not backing down you're getting mugged off in public you're getting angry frustrated and you just call her the c word oh, are you flipping and you, you, your whole career comes tumbling down right <laughs> just off that one comment it's not worth it all your friends distance themselves from you they delete their pictures they do that classic thing where they unfriend you on instagram it's like god man Come on, come on. 